How's it going folks? I hope you're all keeping well and you're very welcome to today's Leaving Cert History lesson which is the case study of the moon landing uh, and this is obviously from the topic the United States and the world. Okay, um, so what was the moon landing? Well the moon landing of 1969 was a product of the space race between the superpowers America and Russia. So after World War II, two global superpowers emerged Okay, and these are Russia and America. And these were obviously both interlocked in what was called the Cold War, okay? Now, it was called the Cold War because they didn't actually directly ever fight each other. But what they did do is they did make great strides in uh, rocket technology and missile technology, okay? In the development of like new nuclear missiles where they could basically, you know, wipe each other out if they had to, okay? And with the, the you know, the development of these nuclear missiles, uh, you know, the same technology could be used when it came to developing uh, rockets to go into space, okay? So, uh, it started off as the arms race, okay? So, the arms race, they were building new military technologies, new weapons, new bombs, new missiles, and this technology was transferred over to the space race, okay? So, the technology used in making bit missiles could also be used in the making of rockets to go into space, okay? And like whoever could kind of get to the moon first, whoever could kind of win this, the so-called space race, uh, you know, it would be a really strong political statement of who was the true dominant superpower in the world at the time. So that's kind of where this comes out of, guys. It's the kind of idea that both Russia and America desperately wanted to outdo each other and show the world who was the strongest superpower, okay? Also, at the time, there was a lot of anxiety, uh, you know, among Russian civilians and American civilians because both countries feared that, you know, they could be attacked or bombed by each other at any time, okay? So, you know, by proving that you could get to the moon, prove that you had the best technology and this would kind of give sort of domestic reassurance uh, in t you know to your civilian populations that you had the technology to outdo the other nation okay so uh, a bit of on the uh, uh, on how the arms race kind of came about guys so during world war ii america was trying to develop an atomic bomb okay and this these atomic bombs were used on japan in 1945 and these atomic bombs uh brought the curtain down on world war ii and brought an end to the war so when the bombs were dropped on nagasaki and hiroshima uh, japan surrendered bringing an end to the war okay um and uh, you know towards the end of the war it was obvious that america had the best sort of military technology but after world war ii when you had russia and america emerging as the two dominant superpowers okay Russia started to develop their own military technology in terms of missiles and bombs and America began to uh, feel a sense of competition okay because Russia could you know not, it wasn't just America that could produce these deadly weapons anymore Russia could now do it and Russia had a means of delivering them okay and um this became known as the arms race okay and the arms race led to many inventions uh, many technological advancements um such as computers and the internet and eventually the rockets that brought men to the moon okay picture on your right hand side there guys is basically uh, the, the, uh that that's a mushroom cloud coming up from a test of the very first atomic bomb and the test took place in the nevada desert in the usa okay um now during world war ii it wasn't just america that was developing lots of new types of weapons and missiles uh germany made great technological advances in world war ii as well okay um and in particular these were through the german v1 and v2 rocket so if you look at a picture in the bottom left of your slide guys that's a german v1 rocket and germany used these in the latter stages towards the end of the second world war and the v1 and v2 rockets were being launched from germany and they were capable of uh, hitting targets on in the mainland uk Okay, and the guy who kind of invented these rockets was the guy in the top left of your slide there, uh, a German scientist called Werner von Braun. He was the head of the German research team that developed and built the V1 and V2 rockets. Okay, and when World War II ended, there was a mad scramble between Russia and America to recruit all these German scientists. Okay, so these German scientists and engineers that developed these rockets, like these were really intelligent, smart men. So America and Russia thought, Jesus, we want to recruit them lads to work for us, and that's what they did. And the U.S. got probably the best of them all, Werner von Braun, the guy in the top left there. Okay, um, and this was like seen as a first successful step for the US when it came towards the space race, the arms race, and eventually the moon landing, okay? So America were delighted that they had just, you know, recruited this guy, Werner von Braun, 
okay um now despite this in the early stages of the space race and the arms race it was actually russia who pulled out an early lead okay so um, the U.S. did very little about their rocket technology until the Russians launched the first intercontinental ballistic missile. And what this was, guys, this was, you know, for short, it was called an ICBM. And this missile was capable of basically traveling from one continent to another. So this missile could be launched from Russia and hit a target in America. And, you know, when America saw this, they basically, you know, got very, very scared and thought, Jesus, we have to really up our game here to try and catch Russia, you know, because, you know, Russia had the capability to bomb us and, uh, you know, send a missile to us and nuke us from their own country, okay? Uh, apart from the first ICBM, Russia also sent the first satellite into space, and this was called Sputnik, and he sent a satellite into space in 1957. So those are two early blows by Russia uh, in the space race okay and this created panic in america as they you know as we said they were afraid the soviets can are going to be able to you know launch a missile that's going to hit america okay <clears throat> so as a result america really sped up their uh you know their spending and their research on missile technology okay uh, and it wasn't long before america caught up with the russians so late in 1957 the americans launched their own icbm and this is called the atlas rocket OK, uh, and a year later, 1958, they sent up their first Earth satellite um, and President Dwight D. Eisenhower also established NASA. NASA stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And NASA, is, you know, that's the, the, the group we're all familiar with to this day that is still over launching rockets and satellites um, for the U.S. space program. OK, but the Soviets were still ahead. So Soviet Russia was still ahead. OK, and um, so. In 1960, they, they launched a rocket called the Luna 2, and this landed on the moon. Now, this is an unmanned rocket. There is nobody on board, but, you know, they were the first country to develop a rocket capable of traveling that distance to the moon. And then a year later, in 1961, uh, Russia sent the very first man to space. And this man was a guy called Yuri Gagarin, okay? And he was like, you know, he became like a poster boy. He was like a propaganda sort of boy for Russia. You know, they, they, he was paraded. He was paraded around Russia in a car. He, um, I think he did like world tours and stuff. And he was like a big celebrity at the time. Why? Because he was the first man in space. Now it says there in the very the last sentence, guys, the Russian astronaut Yuri Gagarin. But Russian astronauts were not called astronauts. They were in fact called cosmonauts. Okay. Now, again, guys, what? So Russia has just sent the first cosmonaut, the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin. This prompted America to step up their game even further to catch them. Okay, so this these successes by Russia encouraged the U.S. to get ahead and spurred President John F. Kennedy to promise in 1961 that the U.S. would put a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s. And we're going to see now that how they actually achieved this. Okay, um, so again. This may, at the time, in 1961, people probably thought, oh, sure, that's not going to happen. That's nonsense, okay? But at the rate that the U.S. were coming up with these new technological advances, um, you know, they were getting closer and closer every few months and every year to their step towards putting a man on the moon, okay? Now, to land a man on the moon, NASA had to first, you know, do lots of research and figure out, well, you know, is it actually possible to do that? Can we send a man that far into space and get him back safely, Okay. Um, you know, so this is quite dangerous stuff here. You're, you know, you're literally kind of gambling on, you know, by, by putting humans into, into space and it's completely unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, so the first program when it came to like, re, you know, space research was the Mercury program. And that was from 1959 to 1963. And this program flew six manned test flights. And as part of this program, uh, the U.S. sent the first American uh, man into space um and his name was John Glenn, and this was in 1962. So this is just one year after the Russians had sent their man Yuri Gagarin into space. Okay, here we have John, uh, President John F. Kennedy, really famous quote by him: "We chose to go to the moon in this decade and to do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard." Okay, really famous quote by him. And again, guys, it's this idea that uh, you know by going to the moon, we're showing that you know we are capable of doing difficult things. We're capable of you know, outdoing the Russians and, and, you know, establishing ourselves as the dominant superpower, okay? Um, so the Mercury program was quite underdeveloped, okay? The Mercury program was really basic in terms of space exploration, okay? And it wasn't until the Apollo program came along 
um, that the goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth became possible. And guys, the Apollo program was a series of missions, okay? And each mission would, would kind of get closer and closer to landing on the moon. And it was the 11th Apollo mission, Apollo 11, when they finally got to the moon and brought the lads back, okay? Um, other missions include uh, Gemini. So, for example, Gemini was another smaller scale uh, mission they did. And that was when the first American astronaut did a spacewalk, okay? And that's the picture, guys, on your right-hand side there from the Gemini program, the Gemini program, whatever you want to call it, of the very first spacewalk. So, the very first astronaut to actually uh, leave his... Uh, space shuttle and walk out in space okay and guys these programs so all the apollo 1 to 10 and uh, the Ge gemini programs were seen as research methods okay and every every time they would do another uh, uh, another test flight you know they would push the boundaries more and more they would fly closer to the moon they would make their astronauts do a bit more, you know more kind of risky things like do spacewalks and stuff and all these small steps along the way were proving that it, you know it was possible to fly to the moon get out walk around the moon get back in and fly home okay um so we're going to focus in on the apollo program so as you said guys the, there was 10 apollo missions before the moon landing the moon landing was apollo 11 Okay, and every t every Apollo mission used different astronauts, and every mission uh, kind of pushed the boundaries a little bit further. Okay, they tried more and more kind of radical things in terms of space exploration. Okay, so the Apollo program used the Saturn V rocket, which was designed by our German friend Warner von Braun. Okay, um, so the Saturn V rocket held one million gallons of fuel. It carried a command module where the astronauts lived and then a, mo a lunar module which would break free from the command module and it was the lunar module that would that was meant to you know land on the moon okay and to test each step there were 10 Apollo missions before the moon landing and NASA used the lessons learned from each mission to improve the design of their rockets and modules okay so and um, you might think Jesus is that probably a little bit dangerous for the crews of the Apollo 1 to 10 because they're kind of going into the unknown every time and yeah guys it was dangerous okay a few of the Apollo missions nearly ended in disaster and unfortunately Apollo 7 did end in disaster so in 1967 Apollo 7 was disastrous because uh, a fire broke out on the spacecraft and all the three crew were tragically killed okay and guys there in the bottom right hand corner of the slide you can see um, the Apollo 7 crew okay uh, you can see there in the top right of the slide that's the Apollo 7 crew while they're actually in orbit okay and you can see there one of the crew members is holding up a sign keep those cards and letters coming in folks okay so so guys that's really that that's a really interesting image there because what America was doing is America basically um, they, they broadcasted all these Apollo missions live on television for the whole world to see Okay, so this was really, really unique kind of behind the scenes inside footage that the whole world was getting. Okay, and again, this was like a propaganda tool. America was showing like, you know, look at our astronauts up in space. You know, look, we're, we're the ones that are, you know, getting, you know, getting closer and closer to landing on the moon. Okay, um, so again, it was the very, very first kind of, you know, live televised broadcast of um, space exploration. Okay. Uh, in 1969, Apollo 10 took three men to within nine miles of the moon's surface and returned safely. So, guys, that was the closest the men had ever come to the moon. Okay, so they got to the nine miles of the moon's surface and returned safely. And by Apollo 10, NASA were convinced, okay, we think we are, we are capable of getting onto the moon, having a walk around, leaving it and flying home. Okay, so by 1969, everything was in place for the final attempt. An attempt not to only to put a man on the moon, but to ensure America's superior status. Okay, so guys, again, America had now pulled quite ahead of Russia. The like Russia were not close to landing a man on the moon at the mo at, at this stage. Okay, so, you know, this was really, really crucial for America to achieve this. And also, guys, remember what John F. Kennedy said. John F. Kennedy said, we're going to land on a, a man on the moon by the end of this decade. So it was June 9, July 1969 at this stage so you know they wanted to try and um, get a man on the moon before 1970 to kind of prove John F Kennedy's word you know so as we know Apollo 11 was 11 was the actual moon landing okay so on the 16th of July Apollo 11 um, lifted from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and that's still the Space Center used to this day by NASA it carried three men Neil Armstrong uh, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins okay so it got to the moon um, after orbiting the Earth, rockets sent the command module Columbia towards the moon at 25,000 miles per hour. Okay, so 
uh, an unbelievable speed and you know it just again highlights the danger of these missions okay after a three-day journey they orbited 69 miles above the moon before actually targeting the moon itself so they basically flew around the moon for a while you know so they could find their 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 designated landing spot okay and that's obviously the three lads there neil armstrong buzz aldrin and michael collins um collins so when they decided right we're going to actually go and land on the moon. So they've been orbiting the moon for some time, flying around it. So they said, right, we're going to go to the moon now. So um, Collins remained, Michael Collins, he remained in Columbia. Okay, so he remained in the command module, okay? And then Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin got into the lunar module. So that was, remember, that was the ship that would leave the command module, land on the moon, the lads would go for a walk, and then they'd get back in and go back to the, um, they go back to the, the, the Columbia module, okay? Uh, the modules eventually separated and the lunar module was fast approaching the moon's surface okay and it was guys again this was done like live on television okay and it was uh it was neil armstrong who like he he guided this module down so this was it was very it was crucial that he could land the lunar module properly on the moon okay you know so it wouldn't be damaged and that they could fly back to their command module okay and the area he landed on the moon was a was a real flat area and it, they, it was called the sea of tranquility okay so guys you can see the picture on the bottom right hand side there that's a picture that was taken by neil armstrong okay so that's the surface of the moon right there we can see the the lunar module in the background okay a really really clear crisp and a, you know a, an incredible photo really okay and you know you can only imagine what this is this, this is 1969 remember you can only imagine what it was like for people to see this back then okay like if we if, if an astronaut took a picture of mars to this day uh, you know it would be an incredible thing for people to see okay um, so when the lunar module landed and touched down on the moon, Neil Armstrong said the eagle has landed, and hence why, guys, that's the Apollo 11 kind of insignia on the top right. Uh, we can see the eagle landing on the moon. Why is that there? Because that's what Armstrong said when he landed. The e when the, the lunar module landed, the eagle has landed. Okay, um, and again, his famous words. So Neil Armstrong's famous words: "This is one st small step for man." and one giant leap from mankind okay and again guys this you know this was huge for america okay guys remember the whole point of this was america wanted to win the space race and show that they were ahead of russia in terms of their technology and show that they were the dominant superpower okay really interesting photo from time magazine uh, you know the the, the the kind of depiction of two ast uh, an ast american astronaut and a russian cosmonaut having a literally having a race towards the moon okay um so this had established, so landing on the moon in July 1969 had established that the U.S. had now overtaken Soviet Russia and the space race. The achievement did not only um, um, mark an American superiority, but it was interpreted as a victory for capitalism and democracy over communism. Okay, so again, guys, it was far more deep rooted than just, you know, oh, sure, we'll show Russia we're better. Okay. It was showing Russia. It was showing the world that, you know, democracy, freedom, capitalism, freedom of speech um you know was superior to you know the kind of totalitarian state of communism in russia okay it also proved that the u.s technology was superior it was well researched it was highly developed and um you know america were leaders when it came to technology weaponry and air power and this was important guys because remember this is just after the vietnam war and the vietnam in the vietnam war and um, everybody thought america would win because america had you know the so-called strongest and most powerful army in the world but america actually lost the vietnam war so you know by america getting to the moon a few years after the vietnam war it kind of proved to the world okay fair enough america is probably the world leader when it comes to technology weaponry and air power okay so what was the aftermath what was the legacy of the moon landing well Again, as we've already said, the moon landing proved significant in, throughout U.S. domestic affairs. It proved that the U.S. was willing to spend uh, vast amounts of money into the project uh, even after John F. Kennedy was assassinated. So remember, it was JFK who wanted to achieve this. And even after he had been assassinated, America still were willing to do this. Okay. Um, it proved that America was very determined in fulfilling John F. Kennedy's promise and upstaging the Russians. Okay. So... Um, you know, proved America was kind of, you know, eager to, I suppose, win the race against Russia in terms of the space race and the arms race. And this gave American people a great sense, I suppose, of relief because they knew our country is, you know, doing all it can to outdo the evil Russians, you know, who, who, who have also have nuclear weapons. Okay. 
And finally, the US, it proved that the US became a leader in technological innovations, okay? And this has carried on to the present day. So like, you know, think of a lot of technology that's come out of America, like Apple products, your iPhone, your Mac, your iPads, Microsoft, you know, Bill Gates, you know, America, you know, it proved that America was and still is to this day a leader in technology. And most importantly, it was outdoing the Russians, okay? Interesting picture here, guys, from a cartoon. You can see that, you know, the Americans have got there, have got to the moon. And as, re as a result of this, as a result of America getting to the moon, Russia didn't even bother in the end. They kind of sort of suspended their space race, okay? And they put their money and effort into uh, into other exploits, okay? Uh, folks, thanks very much for watching. Again, keep an eye on the page for updates on when the next lessons are. Any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment or drop me a message, okay? Thank you very much.